Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. And that piano isn't as dirty as you may think it is. It's just the light shining on the piano. There's Josh. Hey, Josh. I should probably dust it. Well, no, no. It's I have no idea because from what my vantage point, it looks really clean. But then when you look at it on camera, it's just like, wow, what happened there? Yeah. No, it's not doing anything. So It's just glare. It's just glare. It's an ugly glare, but from this side, it's a very pretty good glare. Maybe I'll show you guys later on. Maybe we'll just move the camera. Just be like, oh, we'll do this glare That's next right. time. That's At least okay. it plays notes. Yeah. So, hey, guys. Welcome to uh, Wake Up Missoula. Um, on the show, we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of things, including weather, some city council stuff. Um, it's K-9 Appreciation Week for the police department, their K-9 unit. Uh, we also have some events and some news items. But let's kick it over into gear. Let's talk about a little bit about weather because it's going to be sunny. Like it's always been the last couple of Thursdays, for some reason, I just noticed it on Thursdays, it tends to be... Uh, pretty good, but today it's also going to be good with highs into the 60s. Your current temperature is 52. It's pretty nice. I like right now. It's a good chance to just be out and about. There is a flood advisory warning because things are warming up a little too fast for a lot of that snow runoff to start melting, and we've had a lot of rain, so be be aware that there is a flood warning. And if you uh, had have an area that is in the floodplain, you might want to double check and maybe get some sandbags. Um, even if, even if it doesn't flood now, it doesn't mean it's not going to flood later. Just think about it. Okay. Uh, later this week, you have highs in the 60s, and then Friday, it's going to be 50% chance of showers. It's going to start easing out of it by this weekend, but I'll have more about that on Friday's show. So let's talk about some news things. So Central High School, they're doing a play, um, and they've been working on it forever. It's, it's how to succeed in business without really trying. It's a Fred Lozier's um, 1961 musical satire... Uh, satire t- Satirizing? Satirical. Satirical? No, it's sat- satirizing. 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 Yeah, I know, right? It's it, it's, a, it's a very spicy word, but satirizing mm-hmm. mid-century corporate America will be playing at Center High School at 7.30 p.m. on May 16th, 17th, 18th, and a matinee on Saturday, May 18th. Uh, the show uh, drew cast about 30 uh, cast members and crew about 15. Uh, since February, they've been busy building sets, designing costumes, uh, borrowing costumes, and doing all that stuff. So it looks like they're really doing a big undertaking for the show. Yeah. Have you, uh, you've done plays before at Sentinel. How, how do they, how is the drama department? Oh, the drama department is great. Um, they're, I think they just got done remodeling the theater there. Yeah, so it's like it's both they remodeling like, and making sure that everything's in place. Yeah, they like entirely rebuilt it. So, um, I mean, it'll probably look great. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. The theater. So this is kind of like a debut of the theater and of this play. Yeah, but I do have a lot of drama friends that are going to be in the play. Cool. So, uh, and, but and I know that they're good. Yep. So, go see it. so it's $10 at the door, and they'll only be sold at the door, so you can't pre-purchase any tickets or anything like that. Uh, like, you know, Avengers this week, as Avengers apparently is coming out this week. Are you excited for that? Uh, yeah, I actually already have a ticket. Right. I'm going to go with some friends, you know, the day after. It comes yeah, out. yeah. For me, I'm probably going to – I mean, like, it's just like everything is – too busy for me at this point. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, maybe I shouldn't have signed up for uh, MCT's Newsies, which I'll talk a little bit about later. But yeah, I, um, my brother actually, I think he's already seen it because he works at the theater. Oh, cool. So they they all get to see it like a week before. So now I'm just kind of trying to like dodge spoilers and stuff from like people who have seen pre-screenings. Right, and I've heard a lot of people have been saying it's everything that you'd expect plus more. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. I'm really excited. To see I mean, a lot of people saying that every character has their arc completed. So, you know, yeah. it's the end game. It's, yep. the, it's the end of the beginning and the beginning of the end, that kind of thing. And then I think they're starting, like, phase four or something. Yeah, but they haven't really announced anything. I think they're going to wait a week or so after, and then they'll be like, yeah. you get a Marvel movie, you get a Marvel movie, yeah. you get a Marvel well, movie. Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, Spider-Man's already out. guaranteed uh, Black Panther 2. Obviously. Oh yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the first one's such a huge money maker for sure. Oh, and it was just a great. Captain movie. Marvel broke a billion dollars. Yeah. And that kind of feels like, uh, like in terms of storyline, it didn't feel like they tried as hard as they would have tried every other movie. Yeah. Um, but we can talk about this all day. Sure. But. Just so you guys know, if you guys do plan on going to uh, Sentinel, they have been reported three cases of whooping cough. Uh, just yesterday, uh, Ted Fuller announced um, um, that they are looking for any of those kids who had contact with infected and to seek treatment immediately. If you have a kid that goes to Sentinel High School and you feel as though that they might be coming down with a sickness, uh, come on, get down with the sickness and go to your doctor. 
Yeah. Yeah. I know. I don't. I'm, I should stop trying to be funny. Get down. <laughs> no, no, that was good. <laughs> all right. All right. So all Helena High School graduates will be issued silver gowns with red stoles this year's uh, commencement ceremony. What used to be a gender uh, uh, differential, uh, uh, which basically white for girls and red uh, and red burgundy for boys, will now be just one color which will be silver, which they all voted on, so one central color. Well, you know, like at other high schools here in Missoula, it's always kind of been just one color for each school, which represents, you know, like you have blue and gold for Big Sky, you have uh, um, a purple and gold for Sentinel, and you have red and gold for Hellgate. But this one is more just like, now they're doing this. Uh, and then, of course, I noticed at the bottom of the, uh, uh, of the article is that there are a lot of people who are angered by this. But the change came after students, leaders, and class of 2019 students proposed it to school district administration earlier this year. Um, they have decided to vote on a single ground color for students. Uh, they based the decision on a number of factors, including a suggestion from the Office of Civil Rights that all districts move away from gender-specific gown colors. Yeah, I mean, when I graduated, we all just wore the same purple gown. Yep. Because, like, I guess that's all they could afford, probably. I don't know. I mean, like, it, it really depends cheaper. on the gown. Like, y you have to pay for your own gown. That's just the thing. Oh, I, I didn't. I oh, really? Didn't. No. I all right. Well, come to Missoula <laughs> County Public Schools where you don't have to pay for your high school graduation well, gown. Well, it was just an extra one they had. <laughs> I kind of waited last minute, and they were just like... Oh, okay. They, they literally handed it to me. But you do have to pretty much pay for it. I paid for mine, so, yeah, don't get it twisted. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Pay for your stuff. Please. All right. So, uh, Montana State Treasure State Legislature uh, passed Hannah's Act, which would open a new position to help combat uh, missing and murdered Indigenous people in the state, and work with uh, other offices to ensure communication and create a database for missing folks. Um, and that will be put on Governor Bullock's desk uh, to be signed into a law in the state. And also, for you, any of you guys who are in the f interested in the film industry, wannabes, the film uh, a film tax incentive has. Been and placed on bulk stats as well, which would improve uh, um, tax, um, basically money re and revenue that comes in yeah. to the state of Montana and also give tax breaks to film industries to come here to make big budget movies. And through that, we're able to make a lot of money. So yeah. that kind of did that. And uh, Tyler Gruch, uh, one of the board members of MCAT, has been working on this for the last couple of years to try to help it get passed through the uh, Montana legislature. Um, it's been six years. It, it's been attempted. Uh, three different times, because every two years they do it. Last time they tried to do this, it barely uh, tied, but it wasn't enough to uh, put on the desk. But right now, it's on the desk, so we might be seeing some more uh, big budget films um, stopping by the state of Montana, yeah. which will open it up to anybody who is uh, interested in film industry and working PA stuff. I'm pretty hyped. Yeah? I, I, I'd like to get um, maybe just like a small job on a film set. Yeah, you know? I mean, even PA, any kind of work, you know. It's, yeah. it's fun. It's, like, it's just fun to hang out. And if you don't do anything, you can just hang out with the other crew people who aren't doing anything and just, like, you know, trade memes yeah. Yeah. and I trade want, stories. I want to be the guy on the set that does the, the clapping board. And you just the clap. slate? Well, yeah. you got to start in PA for, like, a year or two before they even let you touch the slate. Yeah, okay. Because the slate's getting a lot more uh, in-depth because they have, like, the electronic slates with the running numbers and everything. It's insane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. But, yeah. But, yeah, just... Uh, it's will so, the Montana Film Office, try to check that out. There might be more jobs popping up for anybody who's interested in the film industry, even if it's for, like, um, uh, contracting work. So it's great. All right, in national news, uh, the census is fun, right? Isn't it? The, the, the census. What? It's basically a head count of all the American people. But now uh, they're going to have a questionnaire which will ask, is this person a citizen of the United States? So the person running the census will uh, be in charge of determining whether or not the person that they put the census on is a member of the United States or not. And this has uh, been a pretty big controversy when it comes to immigration law and knowing this and like that because the census uh, a lot of uh, speculation saying that the census should just be a headcount, non-discriminatory, just whatever, and just to put a number down of how many people are in the United States. And it's mostly meant to do uh, for determining how many uh, r uh, representatives in the U.S. Congress can be representing for each amount of people. Because they have uh, raised the number of people to about a million, uh, 1.2 million people per uh, U.S. representative, which is why Montana has one and so does Wyoming. 
Yeah. So that's one of the things, and this is poured through the uh, Montana Supreme Court judges. All three judges in New York, California, Maryland ruled that uh, Ross's decision to include the question violated procedures for adding a new census question under administration law. The judges in California, Maryland have also ruled that adding the question is unconstitutional because it hurts the government's ability to carry out the constitutional mandate for once a decade headcount for every person living in the U.S. And that's uh, what's happening in the news. Um, you know, that's the, that's the, the skinny. That's the whole kind of deal of it all. But I do have a fun video for you guys. This is made from our Saturday drop-ins. This is a kind of like a behind-the-scenes look at kind of what we experience here at Saturday drop-ins. So check this out. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about some city council. My couch pouch! We're filling her right on the There. They're sad. Like, they have, like, one of them's alive and one of them's it's not really sad. It's sad. Yeah, we should do make a movie about a haunted couch pouch and we can also, like, fall into the crowd okay. with the couch pouch. Yeah. You ready? No. Oh, oh God. I feel like that oh, didn't oh. work, Sammy. It has to do a couple of times. Uh, okay. Why don't you just spin around? Why don't you just spin around in a circle? Here. I'm gonna get dizzy. Yeah, I'm gonna throw up. Oh, Sammy's wearing a belly shirt. Uh oh, bad girl. She always wears that shirt. Sammy, you're so bad at this. I know. It's like, it's somehow. Where do I hold it from? No. The pouch, you gotta get the air in there. Did you? Not did we. What? Did you? There's two holes in there's it. There's three. Oh, that's no. This is there's two parts of it. What the heck? There's two. Come on, Here. Scott. We need your I've help. I've got an idea. Okay. Here. Neil, we need your help. <laughs> I think it's working. Here. Ah! Yeah, oh, nice and open. Okay. And then you just. Get <laughs> it. 
Um, uh, this is interesting. <laughs> Really nice. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some city council stuff. It's pretty short, so don't worry about it, Josh. Um, oh, no worry. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, so uh, this is just some information. Um, uh, it, it got pretty short. Uh, the meeting was just about 30 minutes long, but I got uh, some quotes, some public comment from another uh, uh, person who's been coming to and from um, city council on a regular basis, Andy Hilson, and she's still complaining about um, plastic bags. So here she is. I want to celebrate Earth Day. I do. I want to celebrate this beautiful planet, the valleys, the mountains, the rivers, the lakes, the oceans, the trees, the native plants, the birds, the fish, the elk, the grizzlies, all of it. I want to celebrate the wind blowing in the trees, the sun shining, and children laughing and playing on this gorgeous spring day. But I can't, at least not fully. I can't because since the last time we celebrated Earth Day, millions of tons of plastic have entered our ocean. I can't because by the time, 20, by the time in 2050 that Missoula has achieved its zero waste goals, there will be more plastic than fish in our oceans. More plastic than fish. Maybe speaking about the oceans feels removed to folks in this chambers. Maybe because you don't see it, you don't care. Plastics are also in our forests. When you think you've gotten rid of your plastic bag that you used once, maybe twice, if you're one of the ones trying really hard, you haven't. There's no All right, so that's uh, a couple of the comments that were uh, mentioned there, and I highlighted that particular one because uh, it was passionate. Um, but of course, a simple way to reduce plastic bags is a tote. You know, if you want me to worry about plastic bags, get a tote. It works out pretty well because just the other day I forgot my tote and I ended up having three plastic bags, which could have fulfilled just like the one tote that I had. So guilty. Anyways, so also uh, Monday was Earth Day. And also it was MCAT's 29th birthday um, where we invited um, s folks to speak on Earth Day um, events and causes. And you can find out my more by looking at Missoula Live on MCAT. Um, it's also uh, Police Canine Appreciation Day. Uh, the city put a, a proclamation to celebrate the canine unit at the Missoula uh, City Police Department. Officer uh, Harrington spoke on his dog, Halo, who just lost his battle with cancer just 10 days ago. And since retiring, he's my shadow. He went with me everywhere. So it's been rough without him. So um, the canine program initially began with community support and donations and we have continued to work in the community. We've provided demonstrations for uh, Leadership Missoula, many of those, uh, the Citizens Academy and every high school in town we've given demonstrations to at least uh, a couple times a year. So we maintain that community involvement uh, in a dog community. It's nice that we can do that and uh, again just want to show my appreciation. Councilman Ramos for bringing this forward. All right, and uh, Councilman Ramos also um, mentioned um, um, this later on in the meeting, so this is what he had to say. About it, and it, it really means a lot to him that uh, the city recognized that. I know that um, Halo's loss has been very tough for him, so I just wanted to thank all the police officers, the SWAT team, and Officer Har Harrington and the other canine handlers, because um, the work they do is, is really incredible, and, and some of the stories they shared with the, the canines that actually um, help out uh, where otherwise there, there would have to be deadly force used, the, the canines deter that, and um, sometimes uh, the uh, offendants even put down their weapons or, or kind of run away so it's it's good everybody likes dogs even violent offenders so um they definitely calm down the uh the situation so just wanted to thank all the officers all right so that was jesse ramos um that was a couple of the topics that were happening at the city council but of course one of the big things that are happening in the city of missoula as a whole is that there's a lot of rezoning happening and uh rezoning to include townhouse exemption near grant creek so grant creek is trying to go from like residential to a little more commercial as the city starts slowly expanding so jordan hess reflects on rezoning and and transitions uh, residential to commercial in these particular areas. You know, in a transitional area uh, from Brook Street to the residential neighborhood, and I'm um, uh, fairly confident that this will um, be uh, something that can be built uh, in a way that enhances the neighborhood character. Um, and um, so, anyway, I, I'm supportive of the, the rezone. I just wanted to acknowledge your, your concerns. All right. So, 
the biggest a lot of concerns is gentrification because gentrification is such a huge concern but a lot of times uh the city's uh being reactive in terms of the uh the, the high population hike that's been coming to the city of missoula there's been a high demand for residency and you can see of course the our missoula page the city of missoula's website to learn more information about how the growth policy is happening it was a community driven uh, uh a community driven um event, I want to say, or cause that got a lot of people in the city of Missoula together to have o open public forums to people to help kind of gear what they want their city to look like in the future. So once again, go to ci.missoula.mt.us. All right, that pretty much does it for your city council stuff. Um, Josh, do you want to play us a song after uh, uh, an art clip? Yeah. All right. So let's uh, throw it to an art clip. And uh, this is from the, let's see, I want to double check to make sure. It's the Gallery of the Visual Arts. It's the uh, BFA. This is kind of like their finals week. And this is their uh, art presentation. So check this out. And then when we come back, we'll have Josh play some sweet tunes. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Scott. Hey, I got the time this right. Nice. Okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> a work in progress. You know, that's what happens when you run your own tech, your audio, your clips, and yeah, you just really and you host the show. And, yeah. I don't know, but well, whatever. It's a whole to do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's what else see. What we got here. I can have you in my corner if you like, like right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, Josh. How's it going down there? <laughs> Pretty good, man. Hey. <laughs> Do you just want to just be there, just like, just hang out there for a bit? Yeah, just have me. You just have you on, on the screen? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, indoor sports, fun, arena type stuff. Hey, watch it. <laughs> so, you have uh, Roots, uh, Acro Sports Center, uh, Flying Squirrel, Mismo Gymnastics, and Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. All sorts of indoor fun for your kids. As we're transitioning to the more warmer temperatures, it becomes less and less popular to be in some of these indoor areas, but they're also fun areas to be in case you want your kid to be a little safer, 
foam padded areas, and just a way for your kid to discover their bodies in a safe place. Uh, take a wa uh, walk through time. The UM uh, Oval Office uh, oh, um, is doing a walk through time. And it's basically because, uh, you know, it's Arbor Week, and part of that is to celebrate trees. And Forestry Days is coming up pretty soon as well. And the walk through time exhibit was imagined by uh, physicist uh, Sidney Liebs, who wanted to inspire people with the uh, magnificent story of life on Earth and provide a cautionary tale of how human actions to today threaten Earth's diversity and stability. Leibs completed the project for Earth Day 1997, and the exhibit was funded by the Hewlett Picard and gifted to the Foundation for Global Community. And this is going to basically be happening until the 28th. It's ongoing right now, but it's happening pretty much every day at 10 a.m at the University of Montana. And I believe it's an outdoor exhibit, so you get to walk around to, through the university. So it's a cool little thing. Uh, Empower Place, the Tiny Tales, parents and tots sing, tell stories and rhymes, and enjoy an open reading and socializing time. Join the fun and Empower Place at the Missoula Food Bank, which is 1720 Wyoming Street, and it's from 1030 to about 11. Hands on science. Rocks and minerals. Spectrum Discovery Center is learning about rocks and minerals. and it's 350 for running four and over, and if you're under three, you get free. Scrabble and Bridge at Missoula Senior Center. Hey, you want to destroy some old people at Scrabble and Bridge? That's the place to be <laughs> at 1230-ish. Um, and, you know, have some lunch, hang out, and destroy people at Scrabble and Bridge. You know? Um, you, you know, you can make up words, maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of words that are just added to the dictionary that maybe some people were just like, that's not a real word. It's like, yes, it is. Is that a challenge? Or bridge, which I've never played. So Azazel, whatever. that's a good one. What? Azazel. Azazel. A z a z e l. Yeah. Um, you get like probably like thirty points for that one. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, especially if the triple point ones do, oh, and that's yeah. like. That'll end the game real that'll quick. Pretty much like 120. Destroy an old person. <laughs> <laughs> You'll give him a heart attack. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, middle School Writers Group at Missoula Public Library. This is for groups age 6 to 9 year, uh, nine grade. So uh, it's grade 6 to 9. And it's a good opportunity for kids to improve their writing skills. Um, going into middle school can kind of be tough because it's, uh, it's the big kind of homework load that a lot of kids start experiencing. And this is a good way to help improve writing skills in their language arts. And Neighborhood Watch general meeting is happening tonight at 5.30 p.m. at the Missoula City Council Chambers. Hey, if you are worried about your neighborhood and you feel like there's some sketchy people wandering around, Missoula's Neighborhood Watch general meeting. Meet your neighbors and friends for an evening with Missoula Neighborhood Watch. Learn about crime trends, crime prevention, hear from law enforcement liaisons, and share your observations and concerns. Neighborhood Watch stickers and signs will be available for purchase. And a lot of times police officers can't find out who stole your bike out of your garage. A lot of times they all say it's like, you got to keep your garage closed. Um, you can always have closed circuit cameras going out your window like I do. You think yeah. you know you just got to think about that right Josh? Yeah hey here's a hint if your bike's missing uh, check your local pawn shops. Yeah. That's actually a good tip. I lost some headphones and I found them at my favorite pawn shop. Really? Yeah, and I bought them back for like five bucks. Usually, when you you when you, usually when your stuff gets stolen, you go to the closest pawn shop of which it, in, in which and where it was stolen from. Yep, because people just like pawn off your bike right quick. Pretty much. Yeah, I was I was talking to some guys over at a pawn shop, and they're like, "Yeah, we get we have to be careful about buying bikes because a lot of the time they're stolen." So. Yep. Um, all right, so. Also happening tonight is Women's Comedy Workshop and Happy Hour. If you are a woman and you want to improve some comedy skills that you already have, because women are funny, mm -hmm. get used to it, um, you guys can go to uh, Women's Comedy Workshop at the Badlander. It starts at 6 p.m. And their comedy starts for their uh, revival comedy um, at the Badlander starting at 7.30 p.m. It's every last Wednesday of the month. Um, and uh, Union Hall is every first Thursday of the month, and usually it's, and this one starts at t uh, 7.30, and then the real comedy begins with karaoke at 10 p.m. at the Batlander. Writers Anonymous at uh, Missoula Public Library from 6 to 8 p.m. You know, if you're not in grade 6 uh, or ninth through ninth grade, and you want to improve your writing skills just in general, they have Writers Anonymous at Missoula Public Library every, most Wednesday nights from 6 to 8 p.m. All right, so let's kind of scroll through uh, MissoulaEvents.net, so if you take a look at the website, um, MissoulaEvents.net is your local resources for everything Missoula. Um, they have trivia at the Still Room. They have uh, trivia beer suit at the Press Box. They got karaoke at the Dark Horse. And of course, Craptastic Karaoke at the Badlander. And those are most of your events for your Wednesday. And when I come back, we're going to be talking about um, 
some Thursday events, which there's a lot of Thursday events, so stay with me. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some more events. Right, Josh? Yeah, man. Yeah. This bump. Ow. Is it there? <laughs> My arm popped. Oh, wait, try it again. <laughs> close that, enough. Is that close? Okay. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're like directly there. Boom. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Hopefully that can be our thumbnail. Anyways, um, <laughs> Let's talk about some Thursday. Toastmasters. Ooh, Toastmasters, public speaking. And, of course, they're meeting at Perkins Restaurant uh, tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. And it's from 6.30 to about 7.45. Have some pancakes and have uh, some chats about uh, how to improve your public speaking. Uh, you also learn valuable leadership and listening skills, and you'll discover many uh, surprise benefits. And, yeah, it's the Toastmasters meeting. Toastmasters. You want to give a good toast? Master it. Master it uh, with Toastmasters. Okay, YMCA, family fun time. 9.30 to about, um, okay, I gotta actually got to stop it right here. Josh, so you heard about that, uh, th that lady who, um, I, I don't no ill will to YMCA, but that lady who was uh, found with uh, meth. Oh, yeah, I was actually working there at the time. So apparently she got off. Right. Yeah, she has no jail time. For real? Yeah. Completely got off. Oh, that doesn't sound right. Yeah, and that's what uh, happened in the newspaper. It's just like, what? Insane. Yeah, that's weird. She yeah. was straight up smoking meth in the business that I worked in. Yeah, and YMCA yeah. officials say that you know, like, they spent half a million dollars to get that area um, retrofitted and revamped or whatever, and so they say that it's on her to pay for that as well. Yeah, but that was like a huge inconvenience to the the whole staff. Like, we we were doing summer camps at the time, I believe. Yeah, and we just couldn't use some of our rooms like everybody had to shuffle around yeah because they had to like fix stuff and i hope that they that that she like pays them some money yeah but yeah that that, that just happened just recently this just this week and the sentencing was basically just like no jail time Lame. yeah all right so anyways uh family fun time at the ymca from 9 30 to about 11 um, at the YMCA. It's a good way for families to come together. $22, um, but if you're a member, it's free. Uh, Tiny Tales at the Missoula Public Library, the original place where it all started. Um, you guys can check that out. Um, help improve your reading skills with your kids. Uh, Meditation for Veterans, Learning Learning Center at Red Willow. And this is from 1 to 145. This is uh, geared towards vets. Is guided by mindfulness practice exploring the method of paying attention to the breath to increase calm and reduce stress. No previous experience necessary. Lego Club, Missoula Public Library, they have a whole bunch of Legos. They have five times the amount of Legos that, here, that we do here at MCAT for our Saturday drop-ins. And every Thursday from 3.30 to 5 p.m., they meet in the Dragon Rug in the children's area where kids get to play with Legos. If a kid is under 12, they have to have an adult. No questions. Five All times. right. Predator feeding at Missoula Sanctarium. They'll be feeding crickets to one of the hungry predators at 4 p.m. every Thursday. Um, 
join us, how, they, how we explain and demonstrate how they can capture and consume their prey. Come see who's hungry today. There's the IDS, PC, PP, Peace Corps end of the year ceremony. Um, it's going to be at Brantley Hall at the University of Montana. Um, they, they congratulate recipients of the IDS minor, the Peace Corps uh, prep certificate. You know, usually the Peace Corps is a four-year commitment, and these folks have done four years working with the Peace Corps, going to other countries, and giving aid and working with other volunteers. And this is the newest UN volunteer in a public ceremony attended by members of the service and career service and the Peace Corps. And it's a great opportunity to meet people who've gone through the Peace Corps and how they feel about it. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's a commitment. I've known some people in the Peace Corps. They've really loved it. It's a great way to, like, get out of the state of Montana without um, a military commitment. It, you know, it's the Peace Corps. You volunteer. Laugh for Life. Family Comedy Night with Dustin Nickerson, Sovereign Hope Church. Uh, this is going to be uh, tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. And it's going to be a comedy show, and it's going to uh, help raise money for Sovereign Hope Church and their, and their uh, services. And the tickets go on sale February 1st. Uh, of course, wow, February 1st. Wow, that's, uh, that's, that was long ago. But, of course, you can um, buy $15 in advance or $20 at the door, and it's going to be a comedy night. And uh, have you heard of Dustin Nickerson? Um, no, actually, I haven't. Hmm. But, but now I have. But yeah, he they, they have a they hold they have his own whole synopsis on the MissoulaEvents.net website. Sure. Trees and climate change act locally. University of Montana uh, moderator uh, Karen Sippy, executive director of Trees for Missoula. She stopped by just this past Monday on Earth Day on Missoula Live to talk a little about a little bit about this, but. In this, uh, their panelists representing urban forestry, climate, and water resources will discuss the current state of Missoula's urban forest, how it's affected by changing climate, and the benefits uh, between the urban forest and our water resources. Um, also, the big thing that's happening for your last event is uh, tomorrow night is the big premiere of MCT's Disney's Newsies, the Broadway musical. Mm -hmm. MCT, uh, extra extra read all about it. Uh, Greedy Pulitzer is cutting out the Newsies. Newsies strike and the, to stop the world, the Missoula Community Theater presents Disney's Newsies, the Broadway musical. And they're going to be running for three weeks. It's going to be starting uh, tomorrow night, April 25th. And it'll be going on to May 12th. Said a gritty New York streets of 18. 99, 120 years ago, this Tony Award winning show will inspire and energize your entire family, sponsored by Stockman Bank, Payne West Insurance, Jim and D. Strauss, and the Missoulian. And yeah, so that's all about, of course, you know, the Missoulian almost has to sponsor this. It kind of seems like it's ca uh, counterintuitive. Yeah, it, seem, it seems appropriate. Yeah. Even though they don't have newsies. Yeah. They do have delivery people, but like, we don't call them newsies anymore. Yeah, yeah, no, th yeah, they're just, uh, they just do it. Okay, so Josh, huh. I'm pretty much done with the show. Okay, yeah. cool. There's not much to say. If you are interested in finding out more about MCAT and my morning show, you can log on to uh, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can also go to MCAT.org to learn everything that you need to know about MCAT. We have tours available for any nonprofit groups that want to learn a little bit more about our television station. We work uh, really well with educational and kids and summer camps. So summer camps are, avail uh, are available right now, and you can sign up by logging on to MCAT.org. All right, that pretty much does it. For Wake Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Take it away, Josh Cook.